Hey, this is Good For Nothing. You're watching 416 Entertainment. I'm calling it. It's going to be sick. It's pun there. It was great. The energy was crazy. I like the location. The location was awesome. You just walk through like an alleyway. You feel all like cryptic and, and all that. Probably like my second or third or so show as good for nothing. Definitely like the second after like the pandemic, which we're back into um, in ways. But um, yeah, it was great seeing the energy out, seeing like the positive vibes, the like um, open mindedness to like new music and hearing music that wasn't even like out yet. That's dropping and stuff like that like it was just it was a breath of fresh air to see like a, a community really hone in on that you know on that experience you know I could I could definitely tell that they've been itching for a, a moment where like everybody could get together and you know just get some creativity in a space so I enjoyed I was honored to be part of it honestly when did you start making music My first instance of making music, recording and all that stuff in front of a mic in a booth and stuff like that, seven, <laughs> literally. But then it like took like a, I guess like a bit of a hiatus, you know, seven-year-old decided to take a hiatus <laughs> uh, because, um, uh, you know, seven-year-old activities. But then my mom wanted me to get into uh, acting and stuff like that. So I did that, got into skateboarding, all that stuff, had fun, you know, and um had a resurgence of it like in like grade like seven or eight you know like around grade seven or eight is probably when like I was looking at like ways to like do it myself from like the producing realm um guitar lessons and stuff like that happened early on like in my like pre-teens around there but me and like instruments and the dedication took a while to like uh catch up so um, the earliest instance of me being in a booth was seven and then, um, eight, like grade eight, grade nine high school. That was when I was like looking into like doing it myself via DAWs and FL studio and, you know, all of that stuff. Taking it, yeah, so it would have been, it would have been taking it seriously. It's actually kind of ironic because like, I haven't been in as professional of a studio um, since like the earliest, the, er the younger I was, the more serious studios I was in because of my dad. But like for me taking it seriously, it definitely would have been like before high school, like grade like seven or eight. And then like while in like um while like going through high school and stuff like that, while like skateboarding and all that stuff, I was at home making music, like trying to figure it out, all of that stuff. So I'd probably like pin it at like grade like yeah, seven or eight, where like I was taking it like seriously, coming home, like trying to figure out how to like get the programs, trying to figure out how to like make the make the the beats and stuff like 10 years ago i was doing like remixes and stuff i had my own original raps and obviously and stuff like that but i didn't know how to like pack them together and then release them because like that releasing process is still an enigma in ways like all the stuff that you have to go through um but yeah definitely like elementary school um the last bit of it How'd you get your name? Uh, I went through, so the name, the name that I have now, Good For Nothing, came about um, just after all of the other, just then, yeah, the name came about just after all of the other monikers that I had. Um, I had a few other monikers and as I was like going through, like getting a, a bit more experimental and a bit more like just weird in my music taste, 
it felt like it was like getting further and further away from like what I guess people considered good <laughs> and it, it was it was funny because at the time I was playing around with the concept of like okay well maybe I can like own that you know like just be like a, a weird dynamic of like music kind of a situation and um good for nothing came about when I was just pretty much like man like I literally feel like I'm, I'm, I got the right mindset for music, like it's good, but I'm not necessarily seeing any of the accolades of it. And then I just kind of played with that conundrum for a while. It came like um, almost immediately in all honesty, like not from the beginning, but like after I went through like three or four names and um, that, that name just came because it's like a, it's a double entendre to me, you know, as far as like my history is concerned, you know, like being African Canadian, African American, all that stuff, you know, good for nothing is like always seen as like a, a negative kind of word. But like, I also see like the positive in it, like you're doing good for nothing. You know what I'm saying? You're doing good, expecting nothing in return just because you're enjoying it. So I enjoy like the way that I perceive it as a double meaning. You know, there's, there's other words. <laughs> there's other words that we have taken back <laughs> that we now use to call each other homies every day <laughs> type of a situation. And that one was one that I could like actually see like as a sentence with a period in the end. If you put a comma after good, it means something entirely different, which I thought was really cool. Yeah, so it just, uh, like, sometimes I'll have a song with, like, lyrics that are, like, in a notepad, and then I'm always, like, reworking it, but it usually, it, it starts with, it starts with, like, the music itself, like, it starts with me sitting in front of the DAW with whatever I have to my resources, whether it's, like, you know, the, uh, the, the, the plugins and stuff that's on the computer, or, like, you know, an instrument that, like, I want to like use to sample and stuff like that and I'll just kind of like create like the beat from there you know I'll just like create like the the music first create like the vibes that I like um I don't I don't try and like simplify it for myself so that I can like get through the entirety of it I just like anything that like kind of comes to my head switch up transitions all of that stuff I just kind of like lay it down as like a challenge for myself you know and then um I sit with it and I like really like listen to like what the music is making me feel conceptually because like I have like a visual mindset as well um that allows me to like imagine like like concepts stories like like and just like um situations and stuff like that that you know spark inspiration from like in terms of what I want to talk about I just lay the music out and then I'll like get the, the lyrics will come naturally um depending on what I'm what I'm into and usually like when I'm writing lyrics it's it's usually about like it's it's about like uh, like a lot of my lyrics and stuff like that like it, it's it's just about like the environment of like the way like you know this world has been shaped from you know suits and those that have like just a ridiculous amount of excess <laughs> and you know how they basically influence everything from like the way the money rotates around the world to the music we listen to to the way the apps are developed and I just kind of like package that in a way that like feels like you're almost talking to like you know like whoever you know a stranger that you're just passing by that decided to say yo what's up or like a friend when you're just like literally like shooting the shit you know talking about like the, the powers that be I like put it in those kind of like like kind of context almost satirical like parody in nature in ways Uh, it's it, it's proved to be a passion that's for sure because it's definitely proved to be more of a passion than a career because I just regardless of whatever I'm going through regardless of like whether I'm making any sort of money on it or not like it's something that I can't help but do you know I can't I can't help but make music I can't help but like think of these sounds think of these lyrics it's it's like it for me it's like it's almost like writing like a it's almost like writing like a book you know when people like want to like they, they these stories are like you can keep them in your head 
you know you can keep all of these concepts in your head and just be like oh that would be cool or like you can actually like pen to paper write it down and like fathom it all for like somebody else to experience and take uh their own uh their own meaning from it you know and, and so um i feel like it can turn into a career you know but like i'm not necessarily like focused on turning it into a career in ways of like making sure that I'm keeping up with the latest thing, making sure that I'm keeping up with the latest trends so that like it can see like immediate, like, you know, like gratification because that thing's already popping and I'm just spinning the wheel of that. So it can get the cool, like, I can't, it's like, I can't help but be weird <laughs> when I create this stuff. So it's definitely a passion that like, I just get a see to the end type of a situation. Any advice you have for new artists? Um, any, my, I would say honestly, like for new artists that are like coming into the, the game now, like I just, I would probably say like, just like realize there's more to this shit. And if you already do realize there's more to this shit, like everybody comes up in a different way. You know, there's like, there's, there's tons of people that came up in a different way. Some people make something immediately, it pops, it sits with everybody. And it's like amazing type of a situation. Some people make it because they have an ear for like, you know, like what's, what's common, you know, what's popping now. Like they have an ear for like what, like the general public will like now. And then some people are just like literally like lost in their own wave, can't help but create out of like literally who they feel they are. And, you know, they just do their thing and that like can see success and or it could just see like their own personal happiness. So I just like I would probably say like realize there's, there's more to this shit, you know, like as far as like the uh, the the end goal and just really enjoy like what you're able to do now. You know, at the end of the day, any artist that is coming into the game now is able to take something that like is literally in their own head, <laughs> like just in their head and then turn it into something that like people can actually perceive like in the real world. You know, it's almost it, like to, to take something from like like an imaginary place and turn it into something real. That's like it, it's fantastic. Like it's like nobody should be, um, you know, like. There's no, there's no bad idea when it comes to like what you're doing. There's no bad idea. Like, you know, like, so I would definitely say like, enjoy it and realize there's, there's just more to this shit, like a hundred percent and have a good time. Serious. Um, I would say that it's it definitely has like its roots in like you know alternative hip hop experimental hip hop um I'm a huge fan of trip hop uh that was an era in the 90s that came about like Portishead Massive Attack Hoover Phonic Tricky like the list can go on you know um and I would probably say like it's a blend it's a blend of that you know my the history that I have in music itself it like goes everywhere from like like top 40s to like metal to like like deathcore and then trip hop and hip hop and you know r&b jazz like it's it's all over the map as far as like the things that i've listened to but like the core of it definitely has roots in alternative hip hop and trip hop uh trip hop is hopefully the end goal where i can like actually like have like uh a deep connection with that genre in the way that they just feel free because it's like uh it's one of those things where it's like they weren't the first to do it but they really embrace whatever like your voice is you know whether you can sing whether you can't sing like they really just embrace the idea you know but there's a lot of trip hop of course that has brilliant singer songwriters in it of course but it gets weirder like eve's tumor like it gets weirder the more you the more you dive in it What artists do you listen to? Mm, on a daily basis. So 
I think I listened to I listened to a ton of artists most definitely like as of recent as as of recent I would say like um artists like Injury Reserve um Injury Reserve uh JPEG Mafia like those guys that are just on the alternative Son Lux uh different genre but Son Lux is a uh like I consider them almost like trip hop because they're like alternative like can't even describe them as a sound it sounds big but at the same time it could be really like minimal um porter said massive attack are always on my rotation 100 percent. yesterday i was listening to like swans which is like a punk band i've been listening to like i've been traveling back to listening to a lot of like older like older uh bands that i missed growing up like type of a situation like bad brains and you know a bunch of other like punk bands and stuff like that um but yeah, that's probably like the, probably what, what's been happening as of late, as far as like my, <laughs> my 2020 and 2021 most listened to artist was JPEG Mafia. <laughs> that was the most listened to because the, the sounds that are just coming out and the, the way it goes from like a really coarse sounding thing to a soft thing to like a top forties, like catchy kind of tune. It's just like, it's crazy. It's, it's definitely crazy. So. That's the, that's the simple answer. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely making like a bunch of music. It's actually kind of like, uh, what I like to do is like, I like to make like, like, I like to make like bodies of work, you know, and it's like hard for me to like, then take like my favorite song from those bodies of work and then add it to a different body of work that I'm working on and then like kind of create like that situation because when I'm creating music I do like I think of like from one song to the next even if it's completely random like I have that concept of it's going to be completely random so from one song to the next can't sound like the last song but um I have new projects on the way uh, I got uh working I have I, all I worked on I made uh five songs uh that i released last year that's going to be into a collection maybe with like a couple bonus tracks or something like that called muzzle so um that's going to be on the way and then from there there's definitely going to be more more drops hope two more singles uh that are coming to uh spotify soon called uh one's called outage another one's called they bury us by the hour and then after that there might be like a uh uh, a body worker project that's on the way if I can get all of the 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 boxes checked off on what's to do before and if like I can't get all the boxes checked off of what's to do before I might just cold drop it because <laughs> I'm not like from a space of like um you know pristineness and like the way that I come to music like it's very much like DIY you know like flying by the seat of your pants learning like really quick right going back to like that um passion or uh career question real quick it's one of those things where it's like because I had that split of like the one side wanting to do music the other side wanting me to get into film it's easier to fathom like which one churns out like a career in like you know like the easiest answer and which one is more of a passion on the easiest answer right i've definitely made more money being in like film like films and even in the behind the scenes of films after i studied film and stuff like that like I worked like as a production assistant on like Drake's I'm Upset and stuff like that. Like, and and like a bunch of like Emily Haynes and the soft skeleton, like uh, metric type stuff when she did uh, The Fatal Gift. I was like production assistant on those kind of like, like music videos when I was at a production company. So it's easy to like see which one like generates like the income and then which one is like the passion that could generate more income later as people see me as a creative, right? 